Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson eight of the platform specific series of my 8086 tutorials. I've got an oscilloscope above me, which probably suggests we're doing something regarding audio. The title of this video, of course, also might suggest that, being as it's called Beeper Speaker on MS DOS. And that's what we're going to look at today. Now, we did look at uh, the speaker before in, uh, I think it was lesson six of the main series, but um, just to recap it, and in case you've forgotten, didn't see that. And also, um, we're going to cover something I've covered a lot of times before, which is something known as Chibi Sound. Well, what's Chibi Sound? Well, Chibi Sound is my simple sound driver, which takes a single byte and makes a variety of beeps and bloops for simple games. Because, you know, I need to make games and put them to a lot of systems. I don't have a lot of time and I need something basic to do the job and that's what Chibi Sound is. Now Chibi Sound will take a single byte and the bits in that byte will define the pitch and also the volume and potentially turn noise on and off. So um, the way it works is basically the bottom six most bits are the pitch, lower the number, the higher the pitch, um, with the exception of zero, which actually turns the sound off. Now if the bit six is set to one, then this will set the volume to loud, otherwise it will be quiet. So that will make a louder tone. If the top bit is set to 1, this is noise. So a top bit of 1 and a bit 6 of 0 will be a quiet noise. And the top two bits as 1 will be a loud noise. So we might enjoy making a loud noise today. Anyway, that's the way that Chibi Sound works. Now, with regards to how we make our sound, we're basically going to need to use a variety of ports. Now, we're going to be using counter 2 to define the pitch of our noise and our tone. So that is port 42 in hexadecimal. This is going to take a 16-bit value and that will define the tone that we want to make. So we're going to have to use that to define the tone. We need to, however, configure that counter and we do that with port 43. We need to set the counter mode and we need to set that to make our square wave. We need to set the counter to be, that we want to use as port 2 and we need to set the style and we can either set that as 16-bit, which is what we will set it as, or binary coded decimal, which we will not be using today. Once we've set up our counter, we need to make the sound turn on and we use a right to port 61 to do that. The bottom two bits are the ones we need to look at here. The bottom one enables the counter, which we'll want to do. And the next one along bit one will turn the sound on or off and we will need to do both of those today. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's go over to today's example and let's hear it in action. Let's turn our oscilloscope on and let's fire up today's example. So. The example code we're looking at today is this file Chibi Sound. This is the test code that will make the sounds. And then the Chibi Sound file in the DOS folder is actually the driver itself. So if I just shut up a moment, we hear it. So you can see that we are just consecutively increasing the value in the low accumulator here. And you can hear the tones that are being made. Now, when we get back to zero, you'll hear quiet tones that get low. There we go. And when bit six gets to one, we get loud, continuous tones. And then when bit seven gets to one, distorted, quiet tones. And then longer, louder tones. Now, noisy tones. Now, um, there's just one thing I had to point out. I couldn't figure out a, a good way of doing volume. I don't think you can on this system. And um, the, the best way I could figure out to make distortion was to sort of randomly turn the speaker on and off. Now, I'm not saying they're the best ways. That's all I could figure out from the documentation I had. And the other thing is I wasn't massively concerned because I've already started working on an ad lib version, which is going to use ad lib and sound blaster, which is going to be a lot better than this anyway. So um, anyway, that's what we're looking at today. Now, the Chibi Sound driver is very simple. It just takes a value in AL, an 8-bit value, and that defines the tone. So let's take a look at the Chibi Sound driver and see how it works. So the byte that's passed to it, as I said before, has six bits that are the tone, with the lower numbers being higher pitched, one bit for the volume, with a 1 being loud, and one bit for the noise, with a 1 being noisy. Okay. Now, the first thing we're doing at the start of our code is we're checking if the accumulator is zero. And if it is zero, then we're going to turn off our sound. How do we do that? Well, we just jump down to here and basically we read in from port 61H, clear the bottom two bits with an AND, and then we write that back and that will turn the sound off. And we're going to do that at various times during our code because we will need to silence the sound for the short tones that are when the quiet bit is set. So that's what we're going to do. Now, at the start of our code here, we're just backing up our parameter here and we're moving our parameter into AH because the first thing we're going to do is we're going to configure port 33 and that timer. So we're setting the mode 
to value three, which is going to make a kind of square wave. We're setting the counter to counter two. That's the one we're going to be using today. And we're setting the style of the counter to zero, which is a 16 bit value, a normal 16 bit value. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to take our bits of pitch. So we've got six bits that we are going to use to define our pitch, but we need to pass a good 16 bit number. And for what I think gave the best range is if we shift that 16 bit number to the right by two bits, I think that gives a good range. And then we write the low value to 42, followed by the high value to 42 in hexadecimal. And that defines the pitch of our sound. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to turn the speaker on. So we read in the current value from port 61. We then, or setting the bottom two bits to one, bit zero is the timer enable and bit one is the speaker, turning on the speaker. So we write that back to port 61, but then we store a version with the speaker disabled and we store that in AH. And we're going to use that if we need to make a short sound for our low volume or a noisy sound. So AH is going to be used for that. What we do next is we load CX with a length, in four, which is 4,000 hexadecimal. We're going to use this for short sounds. Now, we're going to then branch out to our noise routine if the top bit is set and we want to make a noise. If we don't want to make a noise, we test the volume bit. If the volume is loud, we're just going to jump to do loud, which simply jumps down here and returns. So we just leave the volume playing permanently. But if we don't want to be loud, we're going to wait until that counter of 4,000 reaches zero. And then we're going to silence the sound and that just makes a short beep, a little bit quieter. If we're making a noise, that 4,000 delay is too long. So we're going to use a 2,000 delay and we're going to just check our volume bit. Now, if we're going to be loud, we're going to make a 2,000 length loop, but otherwise we're going to make a shorter loop of just 1,000. So we do a shift by one bit to the right to shorten that loop. Now, how do we make our noise? Well, this we're going to have to randomly or pseudo randomly turn the speaker on and off to make it distorted. And one of the sources is this random word here. So these bit ones here will be the enabling of the speaker at random times, but that wasn't random enough. So what I'm doing is rotating that around one bit each time. And what I'm doing is I'm combining that with the two bytes of the counter, masking just one bit, this, the bit that will enable or disable the speaker, Oring in the other bits that we calculated from port 61H here into AH, and then writing that bit back to 61. Now, I'm not saying this is a great way of doing this, but it at least did a, a passable distorted sound for my, um, for my sound effects. So I was reasonably satisfied with that. We then repeat until the counter gets to zero, and we just turn the sound off once we're done, because this noise effect won't continue unless we're using our processing power at the time. So I'm silencing it after the loop has ended. And there we go. So that's how I'm creating my noise. As I say, you can go to my website, and you can download these examples. If you've liked what you've seen today, please like and subscribe. If you like the videos, YouTube recommends them to more people. And if you subscribe, you will see that later video, which is going to be an upgraded version of Chibi Sound, which will use the AY sound chip, which is also in the Sound Blaster. So it will do better sound. Now, this is, of course, just a very simple example for making simple beeps and bloops. But I am hopefully going to do a more advanced program later known as Chibi Sound Pro, which is a music playing program. So um, if you want to see better sounds, hopefully you will later on, as I say, please follow along for that. Anyway, go to my website, download the code for today's example if it's any use to you and make some use of it. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.